When we think of menopausal symptoms, the first port of call is often HRT. But like so many other aspects of our health, a holistic approach can make a difference. To explain more, I'm joined now by the British Nutrition Foundation's Science Director, Sarah Stanner. Sarah, thanks so much for joining us. Um, so your vision is quite simple. It's about people eating healthily and sustainably, which is great advice. What specifically about diet and the menopause? Can it have an impact? Yes, so studies have shown that healthier diets like Mediterranean style diets can help to reduce the severity of common symptoms during the menopause. So things like hot flushes, night sweats and even low mood. Um, and by healthier diets, that's diets that typically contain a lot of plant foods. So um, things like whole grains, fruit and vegetables, beans and pulses. But they also tend to contain a higher proportion of the healthier fats from foods like oily fish, uh, leaner meats rather than processed or fatty meats, low-fat dairy foods and nuts and seeds, but as well as um, influencing some of the very visible symptoms of the menopause, it has a, a really profound effect on some of the other changes that happen during the menopause that may be less immediately visible. So, for example, reductions in bone density, also things like blood cholesterol levels going up and uh, blood pressure and also weight. So a healthy diet really is important during and after the menopause to protect um, health into old age and also well-being. Sarah, let's talk about weight because perimenopause typically starts in the 40s, an age when metabolism slows down, people might be beginning to gain weight. How significant is weight when it comes to symptoms? So weight is really important in both the short and long term. So both in perimenopause and in, in postmenopause, uh, women who are living with obesity are more likely to report um, vasomotor symptoms of the menopause, things like hot flushes, and they tend to report more severe symptoms. But of course, weight is one of the most important parts of healthy ageing. Uh, unfortunately, um, being overweight and obese can increase risk of a whole range of conditions in later life, like uh, type 2 diabetes and heart disease, some forms of cancer, high blood pressure and stroke. Um, so it's obviously really important to maintain a healthy weight. During the menopause, many women can experience um, a change in the way that they store fat in the body. So instead of storing fat around the hips and thighs, we start to store fat much more around the stomach area. And that belly fat, which is around our internal organs, is much more associated with ill health. Um, and so it is really important, therefore, to, to think about what we eat. And, um, an easy way to do that, actually, is just to measure your waist circumference so you can see weight creeping on in that area much more quickly than if you jump up a whole dress size or a skirt size. And then you can make small changes maybe to your snacking habits or what you're drinking and also portion size because, as you say, our energy requirements do change over our, you know, over our life course, but we're not very good about adjusting our portion sizes to, to accommodate that. The British Nutrition Foundation have done a YouGov survey on nutrition and menopause. Tell me about that and why particularly you focused on menopause. So it's absolutely great that people are talking more and more about the menopause and particularly about the influence that diet can have, helping women to manage their symptoms. Um, but there's a lot of information out there now and a lot of products on the shelves. Um, and so it can be quite hard for women to navigate that. At the same time, our YouGov survey really showed that lots of the important dietary messages aren't getting out there enough. So for example, amongst women who'd suffered from menopausal symptoms in that survey, twice as many told us that they were, um, they had turned to herbal supplements than the number that actually said they thought about, for example, the amount of caffeine they were consuming or the amount of alcohol they were consuming. We did realize that from that, that there is a real need for trusted evidence-based sources of information. And that's what we try to provide on our website, which is nutrition.org.uk, um, and also via our social media channels. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Sarah Stanner from the British Nutrition Foundation. Thank you.